So my name's Fola, and I am here with the lovely Robert. Do I pronounce your name Mandelson? Correct. Yay! Thank you. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and from I, you can also correct me. I don't know what you would go by, but you're the creator and a facilitator with the powerful play experiences. Positive workplace mental health for teens. I love that. I totally. love it. You love totally. that. I love that. Well, because it's so important, right? And I, I work in mental health as well. So I'm a registered psychiatric nurse, but I've kind of stepped a bit away from solely mental health. And I'm really interested in kind of a more holistic approach to wellness. Um, and that's just and because does, of my what personal does that mean? journey. What does that mean? Holistic? Holistic approach to wellness, but you stepped away from mental health. What does that mean? Well, so... I'm sure you, you said you were, you went to school, right? And I, I'm, I'm sure you took a course somewhere like sociology or psychology, maybe. No, no. Okay. So there's always this talk about holistic, like health, you know, especially in psychiatric nursing, they're always like, Hey, what's the, the physical concern, the mental, emotional. And then there's like the spiritual aspect. But what I learned over the like nine plus years that I've worked within healthcare is that we don't really look at the okay. full person, even though we say, yeah, spirituality is important and all that stuff. They, they, no one really is looking at it or trying to even see it from that lens. So that's kind of where I and come we, in and my interest. When you say that lens, what does that mean? See it from that lens. What is well, that? Yeah, it's a good question. Cause well, the main thing is in mental health, right? We are very much about pathologizing people's experiences. <laughs> you look shocked. But it's, wow. I don't know what's it like. <laughs> Hold on, let me write that down. <laughs> Pathologize. <laughs> I should have taken that sociology course that day and not dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you know, what we do, especially psychiatry, right? It's like, here's our book, the like diagnostic manual. Let's see where you are and how many symptoms you have. But my personal experience after taking people to hospital many times in voluntary, some involuntary, um, I had my own personal experience of what I would call like a spiritual emergence, which I was able to see how similar they were to a lot of the like mental health diagnoses. And so that's kind of what I'm coming from with the lens of, are we looking through the lens of pure like medical model and seeing it only as like a physiological issue of like the neurochemicals in the brain not firing properly or just trauma issues that are impacting emotions and the mental stuff, right? Or is there a spiritual reason, something else? Like, and so spiritual meaning maybe the person starts to see things as like there's deeper connections, right? Mm -hmm. That they have a, they start to realize, hey, there's like more of a purpose here for me. And now what do I do? And maybe I haven't been following that purpose for most of my life. And then that leads to a lot of these kind of existential sort of crises, right? So it's really about working with each client and seeing where are they coming from? And are they, are they kind of stuck in like a paradigm that doesn't really give them the answers that they need? You know, some people are taking medications for, for years and years and nothing changes. And like, I personally, I've been on medications for depression and it helped me. So I can't say medications are wrong. Like everyone's different, but to see that even within our system, we only provide, you know, X, Y, Z. And if it doesn't fit, then it's like too bad. You're screwed. It's and like we need the, to have this holistic view. It's, sorry to interrupt. Is, is that the, the pathology that you're referencing? In other words, um, we, we, uh, what doesn't sit well for you is a straight line. From, from illness to wellness. Mm -hmm. It's not a straight line of, of, of a diagnosis, a pathology, a reliance on uh, data, uh, studies and research. There's a lot more going on and that excites you. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I think that's the same for you. Cause, and if we look at it, a lot of like spiritual practices they talk about the feminine and the masculine right we have the the left and the right side and so the medical model it's like it's helped us so much like I'm not saying it's just throw it away but it's all very a masculine action oriented very like data centered right and then on the other side that more feminine 
or more passive and flow and creativity side, that's where like play comes in, right? And all these other sorts of intuitive ways of being. And we've for so long been in just one and now it's like time for them to both be okay. in the same space, right? So that's why it's neat to see the things that you're doing, right? Because you're seeing the importance. You can be productive, productive, productive at work. But if you don't add in play, then that productivity almost is like pointless because people struggle then with their own wellness, right? And, and, and so if I under, just continue to understand you, um, to not, you're, you're very much motivated to look at uh, um, sickness and wellness um, from, a, from, a, from a modality, a, a way that is maybe unwritten, unscripted, that maybe has a little more of, uh, I don't know, I won't say ambiguity because that's not the correct word, but you're going on a journey, a journey of figuring this out through an experience and an engagement, a conversation, an understanding of self. And who's writing about that? Well, yeah, it's, it's all based on the individual. Okay. Right? Not, not on what one person says it should be for another person, because we can never fully understand what someone's gone through or what they're going through. You know, and I think that's why there's such a shift to towards more like client centered care, where you really and trauma informed care, where we tr really try to like work with clients. And it's up to also the practitioner, whoever's providing services to um, allow the client to kind of guide. Right. And I like how you said the straight path, because it's like nothing really is ever straight. Like, let's be honest. Right. <laughs> so. Uh, before we started uh, our conversation here uh, uh, via video, uh, I, I mentioned use, I used the word organic, that I'm very much an organic, um, in terms of how I organize play and fun at work workshops. Is that a little bit of where you're going with this, that maybe there's an unknown, but at least the minimally we have an understanding of where we want to end up, but how we get there can maneuver and flow through the experience together yeah 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 i agree with that completely and trying not to put ourselves because even as we started right i'm like well i kind of need to know what's happening yes. like but just so that we're more on the same page right but i for me personally i'm much more of a action directed sort of person i have to always be mindful okay how much am i trying to control too much here and not allow for that organic sort of flow to, to be present, right? Because that's where then a lot of creativity and excitement can come in. Yeah. I call that planned spontaneity. Planned spontaneity. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, when, <laughs> and, and so my workshops, and I believe a lot of the work that you do, and a lot of the play that you do with people has a, a degree of um, planned spontaneity. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so, you know, I've, I've taken part in quite a few like workshops or group circles, whatever you'd like to call them. And that's exactly it. You know, we, we need to have a little bit of a direction of where we're going, but allow for that flow, whatever's coming up in each individual that's part of that group. Because I, maybe you could talk a bit about kind of how your workshops are led and what you find comes up for people during sessions because you know it can elicit different things for people and you have to be able to at that point you know meet someone where they're at right amongst a group which can even be more challenging like i personally have not led a whole lot of groups so i, I can't speak about this too much but um <laughs> You know, but just being a witness and observing and seeing other people leading groups, I can tell that that's another, another area where, yeah, you kind of have to have that plan, plan spontaneity. I really I definitely like that. So as opposed to having me talk about powerful play experiences, positive workplace mental health for teens, let's talk about play. Because okay. you wrote you put together a wonderful blog on the value of play in our lives. So let's not just focus on work. Let's take a few minutes and then we'll wrap this up. Let's get stuck on the value of play in our lives. And most mm -hmm. significantly during this period of time, mm -hmm. with all the crazy that's happening out there. So you wrote something about play. 
And that attracted me to reach out to you. And you said, wow, you're the play guy. And I said, yeah, yeah, but you write about play. You write well, about play. Did I write? Well, I guess it was like a short thing. But then, yeah, I, I did put a, the podcast episode out um, not that long ago. Because, yeah, that's something that's coming out for me. And I, you can see it online too, right? I'm sure you're seeing lots of people posting kind of about how they're stepping more into creativity because everyone's kind of like getting bored out of their mind. <laughs> like that's, you know, which... Well, I guess if that's what it takes, but definitely. So now is if, depending on when people are watching this, we're kind of in the situation of the COVID-19. So most people have been kind of sent to their homes and are in some form of a lockdown. Um, some people are working from home. Some people have completely been laid off. So they might have more time on their hands. Um, so definitely we're in a different era, I guess would be you call that. And it yes. is it is such a beautiful time despite all the chaos for us to be able to see, okay, now what can we do now that our, our work mentality and all that's kind of been stripped away. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and what a, what a wonderful way to articulate it has been stripped away or has been stripped away from us. Mm -hmm. and, and the whole, the whole uh, uh, point around um, time, how do we fill time? And I, I recall in uh, my college and uh, university education when I was um, moving towards working in the field of recreation and leisure, uh, and this is many years ago, the professors at that time uh, said, this is pre-computer, pre pre-technology, pre the, uh, the vision uh, way back when, when I was in college and university was uh, in the future, technology is going to create more free time, more leisure time, because mm -hmm. it will take care of work for us and free us of work obligations. So, uh, and this is, this is, I'll date myself here, but this is in the early, the early to mid eighties when I'm studying college and university uh, recreation and leisure uh, courses. Um, so it's funny that here we are so many years later and now we're talking about time uh, uh, and the absence of work and idle time, idle time. That was a big discussion in college and university, you know, the use of how people are going to use idle time in the future, which was mm. today, but with technology downsizing uh, work responsibilities. And the prediction was that at that time, the prediction was that we were going to go to a three or four day work week. There just wasn't enough work to fill our time because technology was gonna take care of that for us. And the need for recreation and leisure professionals like myself is going to be huge in the future. Not so much, not so much. But who knows what's happening? Because there's a lot of talk and I, this is something, so the past year I was working as like a clinical nurse educator and just seeing how, the amount of time at work and the actual amount of work that was being done in people around me. I was like, why are we not doing this? Like, you know, three day work week or whatever. And there's been talk now. So who knows what will change. Right. And I think people will start to realize how important play is and just being present in the moment. And I think you'd written in that one article, you talked about the inner child and connecting and that's something I think we can both probably connect with, Robert, is um, with the studies I've taken within like shamanism, it's all about that inner child work, right? And it's about allowing the inner child to come out and play and, that, and that's healing, right, in itself. And so many levels that some people, maybe they're not really into any of that and that's totally fine, but it's gonna do something to like bring up more capabilities and creativity overall and just happiness, right? And, and I, don't, I don't think they're not really into it. People aren't aware, right? People are becoming yeah. aware of how to, of, people are becoming aware of the impact of the absence of work on their time. Mm -hmm. And as a result of needing to fill time with activity, the benefit, the value, the learning, the growth, it's all those things that you're talking about. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Nobody is consciously sitting down with themselves at the dinner table saying, wow, we've got lots of time now. And in the absence of work, let's play. <laughs> it ain't happening. But they're naturally gravitating to some form of play, mm -hmm. some form of play. And we've been seeing it online and in our conversations with people. 
Um, and through, through that action, through that action of, of moving towards play, through this, the, the sheer fact of, of the absence of work and less work, mm -hmm. wonderful new opportunities, wonderful growth is happening. Like, like, <laughs> I'm like what? Talking. <laughs> oh, are you are you asking? Well, I mean, even connecting with you, right? And yes. being able to like meet with new people, and you know, like we held that that meditation call again today, and someone that was in the group was just some random person that like had seen something I wrote somewhere, and I was like, and they live in the states, and I was like, this is so cool, like so cool. see see how much we can be connecting with other people, and then yeah, where did those opportunities take us, right? Yeah. And the, the, oppor the opportunity uh, uh, now exists to take mm -hmm. us uh, on a different journey through the sheer absence of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, is, what, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I'm, I, well, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by the stick thing. <laughs> They're boom They're boom oh, I see. Okay. Yes, yes. But, so. but no, it's true. And that's where, so, because I, I, so I was working within mental health, like I still do, but casually, but I completely left my job in October last year. And uh, that was partly because of the, there comes a time where you have to find how much are you putting your energy into being work only or play or creativity is kind of, you know, where I see it. And even though I'm still technically working, it's like the, the degree of work has shifted where it's not this like top down sort of direction of work. It's much more inner directed. And I think that's where that play comes. Cause I'm sure with your, you're guiding people through the workshops that you lead, you know, you're allowing them that opportunity to really just go with what is coming from within and explore. Uh, the child right? within, a child within. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the child within so for so as work changes as work is changing and how it how it functions just based on everything that is happening it's been it's work has been forced to um uh take the back seat. Like, pardon take the back seat exactly exactly take the back seat and while it's taking a backseat, it's trying to figure itself out, right? And, let, and letting the child drive. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Don't let your children drive your vehicle. Totally. And, and, and what is even, what is wonderful about this is people are comfortable with yeah. it. Well, it's, it's, but they're starting, yeah, some people are more so. I wouldn't say I'm one of those people necessarily fully. But you're doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> Play if it's a time slot. You yeah. know that you put on a calendar. It's it's all the be. It's a, a way to be. Yeah. And you're being very playful right now. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> it's it's in, okay. So what are your thoughts? You're going and, into your head again. You're I, I know when I look up, I do. But you're no, because I your head again. <laughs> so here's a question. You yeah. know, like I I like to follow some like leading motivators. You know, you got like Tony Robbins and all these people. Like, uh, what's his name? Oh. Can't remember. He has that. Bob Hooey. Kerwin Ray. Who? Bob Hooey. Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, I don't know if I know who that is. <laughs> is that a real person? <laughs> You'll have to share that one with me. But some of these people talk about, you know, how you have to take steps and really set like set goals for yourself. And some people will like sit down and make a schedule of what they're going to do in each each like hour of their day. What What are your thoughts on that? Because I've kind of always struggled with that, especially when I was working in that role, I would, I would find if I didn't set down time, I would get pulled in all these different directions. And then sometimes things would never even get completed. Right. But then there were other days where I'd set out specific, okay, between eight and 10, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this throughout my day. And sometimes it happened and sometimes it didn't. Right. So wh what talking, do you think? Are we talking about work here? Uh, yeah okay i guess so because <laughs> that that you know what like it sucked the energy out of me right there it sounds like work is that it does yeah it, it does. does it does so now now i have to come back to the same the same conversation but think about play address the same question or thought but now think play well yeah i wouldn't want to really 
except see, and that's an interesting thing, parenting, parenting a child now and schooling a child from home where the school is very much set like recesses at this time and yes. gym is at this time is, you know, like kids, I think still have fun no matter what, but in order to do that at home and having to try to follow a routine, but still promote that creative like experience of play and just being I'm, but I, I guess though, I'm not really scheduling that. It'll just come naturally if it needs to. And does it? Yeah, I, I think so. For you? For me? Um, yeah. But the, you know what? Now that you're, you have the wheels kind of turning, but it's more being like accepting that. And I, th well, yeah, accepting that sometimes we just need to be in the present moment. And that's something I talk about, but I still struggle with because of that very that. work oriented, you got to be productive and you got to do this and accomplish such and such a, such a thing. Right. So yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Can tell. <laughs> she said, why is he asking me so many questions? Yeah, what? <laughs> why am I doing all the talking? It's supposed to be going the other way. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can summarize this. Let's see if we can summarize the conversation. What are, what are the, the top five learnings that have come about through this whole conversation that was very organic, very unplanned, uh, with a wonderful sense of playfulness to it, but also based on some experiences, real life experiences uh, that you bring to the table and, uh, and that I bring to the table. So what have we learned? What have we learned in at number five around the subject of play and the value of play in our life, not just in work, but in life. In at number five, what did, what did you and I throw out there that could be a learning at number five? Is this, okay, so is number one like the better one? <laughs> the top one? <laughs> I'm just checking because I'm going to be careful when I look. Okay, Do you see how my mind number, works? We'll start at number three. Okay, that works. Okay, number three. Well, it's, it's fun. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and fun as an emotion is well, a healthy place yeah. to be. Yeah, it's enjoyable, right? What, fun, uh, and you know about the you know, the, the physiology, the change in the physiology mm -hmm. when we embrace fun and play, mm -hmm. you know, so on one level, there's a huge change in physiology, right? But there's also a wonderful sense of engagement. In it. It's a form of communication. Yeah. It's an engagement tool, right? Yeah. It's a way of being. It's a childlike way of connecting. So that's number three. And at number two, <laughs> what is one of our lives? And at number two. Um, well, play play needs to be organic and natural right it cannot be something that we we feel well i mean maybe it can be for some people but we just have to allow it to flow in a natural way in which it wants to kind of come up right we can have a plan but as you said earlier if we focus on the individual if we focus on the client and allow them to have permission to play and take play in a way that allows them to feel safe in their space that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You look very serious right now. You look very... <laughs> trying to like, well, probably because I'm trying to think, okay, he's going to ask me what's number four or something. Okay, so like, what is number four? We should have just said three. Why are we going to five? <laughs> hmm. Number four. What is uh, the value of play in life? Not just work, but in life. Well, to me, I'd say it's healing. Oh, tell me about that. Yeah. Well, just like the inner child healing, right? And healing, <laughs> healing that balance between masculine, feminine, or that active and passive side, which we all have, and we should be in balance. Because I do feel like that's something also that promotes wellness overall, like in the body and in the mind, right? Yeah. Wow. And do you, can you, can you recall a recent experience of yours where, where through, where through play, uh, you moved from un, a place of not healed to a place of healing. Can you think of a recent example? Hmm. Um, and don't overthink it. It could be something. I know. I'm be, looking around my house because I see well, toys everywhere. And I'm yeah, like, what? Be, I said, well, you know, I woke up this morning and maybe my mental space wasn't where it needed to be. I didn't have the energy. But, but you know, as soon as I engaged with my sister and the kids uh, through, through no plan, 
but but just being together, you know, I felt energized. I felt mm -hmm. ready to go, ready to start. Ready. I felt good about me. Yeah. And that's yeah. from that sort of an unhealed place to a place of, so give me an example. Well, one thing I'm really finding is like art. Like I would not say I'm an artist and I think most people say that. And I've never really enjoyed like drawing or anything, but that's something definitely I've been stepping more into. And the cool thing about it is actually seeing the like abilities to draw or paint kind of improving, you know, and that, that to me is very neat. It's like, oh, <laughs> I'm not so horrible as I've been telling myself all these years, right? And then also encouraging my daughter, like cause she takes part in that too. So yeah, I would say that's something that's been popping up over the last few weeks for sure. In at number one, we have two more. In at number one, in at number one, the value of play in life. Think of today's circumstances. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like it, it brings people together more. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's good, for it, sure. It, tell me more about play as, a, as community building. Tell me more about that. I can, I can see it a lot on, on social media right now because I mean you know people are physically distancing themselves so we're not necessarily allowed to be up close but even earlier today I was doing a sitar lesson like I'm taking sitar le <laughs> lessons and it was on Skype and I'm like this is so cool and we're like encouraging each other and still despite this inability to see each other like in the same room we're just being in this like in this moment right and taking part in this in this similar activity and I know it brightened my day to hear the teacher then play because she played for all of us, right? And um, yeah, it's just, it's so amazing to see that because yeah, people are being locked in their homes <laughs> pretty much and it can be a, quite a down time, right? So that was like an, a lovely hour, I would say. So yeah. every, your response, everything you just said in the past 30 seconds to a minute, you had a huge smile on your face. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I know, and, 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 and you were energized, right? Mm. You were energized. And here are words that you said. So cool. Being, being in the moment, brighten my day, uh, 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 <laughs> engagement, taking part, amazing. Those are pretty positive words. Yeah, and, 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 and all we're doing is talking about play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, in at number five, and that's the last number on the list. Number five or one? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you challenged me. I started at five. You challenged me. You said, well, does that mean if we move from five to one, one is No, five. I know, I know. So we, we kind of scattered the numbers. So, so five. something that I feel that's really coming through, same with the situation we're in, is that people are much more willing to take risks. And not like financial risks necessarily, but like risks of who they are and their value and that's building like people are like well i might not even be around next week based on all the things that are happening like this sounds pretty negative right but it's like so what do, what can i do now that's going to brighten my day and that i i feel passionate about and they're willing to share that and to me that's so cool wow yeah. well, when you say that's so cool it's touching a chord in you so what, 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 explain that to me. It's so, it's, it's so cool. Well, cause for me, just with my experience, it was working in a job that was pretty, like, it was a pretty great job. I, I really enjoyed the team I'm, I'm with. Um, but then it switched into this area where I felt really passionate about like people stepping into their purpose because I'm like, wow, like I can do this. And like, how much more amazing is life now? I thought it was good then, but now it's like everything. It's like a free for all, right? Like if you just threw like a bunch of kids into like Toys R Us, just throw kids into Toys R Us and let them like go free without anyone telling them like, no, don't do that. Like that's kind of what it, what I would equate it to. And so that's why it's like, Hey, people are actually starting to do that. Right. And follow the things that they, they love and, enjoy each moment because that too right that's the difference between that work and play is doing something you're kind of like uh, forced again to do this versus i love this and i could do it all day right yeah we we, we we're all joining full full up yeah <laughs> in the full of sandbox <laughs> yeah go, go on we, we're all coming to full of play park and we're gonna play in the sandbox we're gonna build sand castles we're gonna go on the slides and the swing 
and, and a, whole, a whole bunch of us are gonna come as strangers, as strangers in our community, and through the act of play, we're gonna leave as friends. Mm. So play is a wonderful way to, uh, to create friendships yeah, and build community. And, and as you said, uh, um, um, due to the circumstances, we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. We're all in this together. You rock, girl. You rock. Thank you. No, you hold too. On. Hold on. Wait, what did you <laughs> play just for the sake of playing and having fun? Tap here for mental, positive mental health, dude. Let's <laughs> like, do this. Hold on. How do we do this? I do we... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll hold it here. And then I oh I oh I see I see what you're doing. Yeah, okay, no, okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on, okay. Really? Turn. Oh. Just play for the sake of playing and having fun. <laughs> oh man, I love that. Thank I you. love bring these to workshops, right? And and see you know, see who's gonna tap for <laughs> mental health, right? Let's try that again. Okay, okay, yeah. we'll do it. We're pros now. Go. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> gotta get closer there we go <laughs> oh my gosh you, you should definitely go within some uh, alberta health services circles and... oh are you saying that they uh, are you saying that they need some healing <laughs> i didn't say that you know but but you know like major i'm sure you've you've seen in major organizations and um larger where there's larger employee numbers, right? <laughs> there's a need for a lot of that. So yeah, no, it's awesome that you're doing what you're doing. Well, well you know what? I, um, somebody this morning sent me a, a text and said, uh, gee, you're in such an inspirational mode mm -hmm. as of late. And I feel that I've always been in that mode, but a mm -hmm. little more so recently uh, because of um, the excitement I feel watching the community, watching people embrace play due to the absence of work, mm -hmm. due to the absence of structured time uh, around work in their work day. Uh, so I'm excited to see people embrace play, but I'm more excited to see the smiles and the energy, you know, and the connections and, that are taking place because for 13 years that I'm out there, mm -hmm. yeah, delivering powerful play experiences, positive workplace mental health for teens. It's been hard to drive home that message, the value of play, but people are discovering that on their own right now. So the future is bright. Yeah. Just, yeah, the future is bright for folks like you and I, who are healers, healers in our own unique and individual ways. Hola. <laughs> 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 oh, they have different sounds. I love that. Well, I get well, this, let's, okay, we'll end off with the boom whackers very quickly here. So the, the longest boom whacker, the longest one, the red one, is the low C on the piano scale. Or oh. the scale. The orange. Okay, I didn't know this. Yeah, the yellow. The light green. And our dark green, our purple, our fuchsia, and the low C on the musical scale. Pretty cool. You have your own band there. Now, I've got 80 of these suckers. Oh my god. <laughs> I bring it to the workshops and allow adults to play with them and get their hands on them. Tons of fun. Oh. Oh, for sure. Oh, so are you doing anything online like right now or what are you going to be kind of offering people? Because obviously people are looking for things, right? Uh, Monday to Friday, uh, I'll post a video on uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. I call it the five minute, the five minute video workshop experience. So oh I'll pre-tape a video around the idea of fun at work at home never felt so good <laughs> love it love so it. i'm at work at home never felt so good and uh, we'll post a video from monday to friday uh, during the work week and it's really all about connecting with people and uh, driving home the message that yeah you're working at home you're working at home but let's have some fun at work at home 
because that's good mental health. Mm -hmm. That's good mental health. And it's a lot about uh, appreciating the situation that we're in. Mm -hmm. But uh, to bring a smile to everyone's face, to encourage good mental health, and to uh, lighten things up as we uh, try to figure out, um, uh, as we try to figure things out over the next uh, several months together. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Again, you're back to that serious look. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm always serious and, and sarcastic. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Robert. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And yeah. how do people find you? Uh, yeah, I'm also on LinkedIn, full of Veritas, and Facebook, which I don't know if I follow you on Facebook, so I'll have to look you up there. Um, but uh, I also have a business page full of Veritas spiritual integration and healing. So people can look for me on there and I'm trying to provide as much, even despite this physical distancing, cause I do like long distance sort of sessions of coaching oh and different type of energy work. So that can really be energy. Well, yeah, cause it's important, right? Like we were just talking before we started recording about the days where maybe we're kind of struggling emotionally and our anxiety can be really high. For me, my personal experience has been very positive using energy work and such as Reiki and um, yeah. So I'm just hoping to kind of pass that on to the world so that they don't feel like all is lost. Yes. Yeah. And you and I, you and I had some great energy here and I thank you for that. Thank you. And uh, you could turn, you could turn the video off now. <laughs> Stop. Bye everyone. Stop.